So I've been thinking about this topic, but having a hard time thinking of how to organize it because it's just so complex. But a lot of the reasons the human race is so screwed up and you know it's like i don't mean this in a in a hateful way but it's the human race isn't the way it was a very very long time ago um there's some people who still maintain most of the natural uh human design so to speak but supposedly there used to be uh, a lot more larger humans. Um, and those humans used to be able to uh, raise themselves and start building families when they were in their teens, like when they hit their teens. You know, technically, they could have children earlier, uh, maybe not much earlier, but they could actually carry them to term without causing harm to their bodies. We have such a problem now, at least, you know, based on my understanding of the history I've learned, based on the understandings of uh, human, the human body, you know, some of the science I understand, and... Uh, mostly it's history and a lot of it's currently hearsay but it's the best information we have of times long 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 past but a lot of races of humans have been enslaved over the millennia and in that enslavement the societies they were enslaved by because of their uh, social ties with slavery, they obsessed with being as good-looking as long as possible. Because of the nature of slavery and its uh, connection to sexuality, the things that were considered attractive were heavily influenced by fetishization, uh, not with the ideal human uh, form, so to speak. So we ended up, a lot of us, our, our ancestors long time ago, and some not that long ago, ended up losing the ability to become mature when we're supposed to be mature physically, um, mentally, and a lot of other parts of our biology still goes through the same phases at the right times. Since a lot of our physiology, like hormones and uh, organ development, still happen at the same rate albeit not the exact same way you know so it's like you know a lot of races of humans have extreme difficulty carrying a child to term if they aren't old enough and and that's not accurate at all because there are some people who are never able to safely carry a child to term most of that i believe is because the 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 humans that could were not considered attractive on the uh sexual slavery side uh you know going on to the cultural side again because of the connections between slavery and culture even if you get rid of slavery you, you can't get rid of the cultural effects that, that essentially come from slavery. You know, it becomes ingrained into our culture 
and what was normal for humanity becomes taboo for all sorts of reasons. So now I gotta I gotta rethink a little bit. All right, on the cultural side in the West, and not all the West either, because it's it's mostly pop culture enforced by the the internet and people's ability to connect to each other, to compare notes, essentially. Uh, we've been being made to conform to the extremes of the screwed up humans. And by screwed up, I mean screwed up by slavery, you know, not being able to carry a child to term properly. People don't really understand why, because they don't know what humans are supposed to be like, because most of our history has been lost, you know, and the history we do have is so distant regarding this topic that uh, people can't believe it, you know, they, 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 you know, they absorb it see how things actually are today, and then just kind of dismiss it because it, it doesn't apply to us today. Um, there really is no way to fix the human race except through accepting what's supposed to be human nature and understanding that a lot of us don't conform to what humans are supposed to be and that we've been manipulated through slavery in the past and through the cultural norms created and carried on even after slavery is uh is considered forbidden now it's like originally slavery was how people dealt with people who uh who were considered a threat to society, you know, so it was the prison of the day, you know, except instead of locking people away and letting them be tormented and tortured like a living hell, they had them in their homes. Uh, they essentially assimilated them into their cultures or into uh, what's normal. And then eventually, most of the time, they would free them. So... You know, they would either free them uh, while the, the, the owner was still alive or they would be freed when the owner passed away uh, because it was, you know, it's, it's a lot of it's like housekeeping, you know. So it's like, you know, a lot of times when the owner would pass away, you know, they wouldn't just inherit their titles you know, they would have learned from the owner and a lot of times they would inherit the property and stuff like that. So it's like that's that's what I that's what slavery used to be a long time ago. The the slavery that's been demonized is more like the way the prisons are today, where it's just people torturing each other, uh, badly, badly managed, uh, a lot of times managed by people who live extremely far away from where the slaves are kept and bred like animals, you know, effectively, you know, the slavery that we're all taught about is like a, a human farm version of slavery, which again, our culture still allows as long as it's voluntary. So it's like, you know, we, we've learned to exploit and require you know, teach the, the requirement of exploiting people in order to maintain our society, uh, which is completely not true. You know, it's, it's, it's completely not necessary. In reality, things don't really change that much. They're not supposed to change that much. You know, it's like the weather changes, the environment changes, you know, how we live in the environment with the changes is where changes t typically happen, you know, but people who want productive, free people force changes 
and adaptations and uh yeah basically forcing changes to to force people to have to change whether they're ready or not to push their version of of what they believe is uh human human science you know so it's still breeding slaves you know that's that's the 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 purpose uh, whether you want to use those words or not, that's the actual purpose: is breeding slaves and managing slaves. You know, it's like it can it can be considered human resources or or human management, but it's slave management. You know, it's forcing people to conform in order to uh, to control and create a specific environment in society. Com, you know, all, all of which abandons actual human nature and what humans are supposed to actually be like. You know, uh, they believe if humans are allowed to embrace their nature, they'll become wild animals or monsters. When in reality, our actual nature is supposed to include having our brains working properly to the point where we can feel the creator's consciousness within our own consciousness. You know, not as a separate thing or an imaginary thing, but, you know, uh, a a completely connected flow between ourselves and the Creator's consciousness. And with that full consciousness, we're able to understand how how everything feels and thinks, you know, like empathy, you know, it's like perfect empathy. Uh, something that doesn't actually require effort unless you're a broken individual and uh, and being required it, 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 it's kind of insane it's like it what they're what a lot of people are doing today is they're trying to create normal humanity without actually creating normal humanity you know they're doing it as a form of idealism instead of a healing process you know, they, they use healing process terms and stuff, but they don't really understand what that means. You know, what the, what the real healing is required uh, for us, because we're not really given the time to heal or, or the right guidance to heal. You know, we're, we're guided by people who don't actually know what they're doing. They don't know what humans are supposed to heal towards, you know, so a lot of what is considered healing is is part of controlling people's behavior so that uh, people who are too sensitive and haven't learned to be emotionally strong don't have to be emotionally strong you know so that they don't actually have to try uh, to be tolerant you know while they demand tolerance for themselves they're not tolerating others you know they're demonizing others and vilifying others and calling them evil you know when they themselves aren't good they're just weak and they're not being taught to be strong they're being taught to enforce their weakness and attack other people for being bad and, it, you know, it's not good to torment people or, or anything like that, but you need to be stronger. You need to be able to withstand it. You, you need to be willing to, to try to understand, actually understand the people that you're being offended by. You know, it's like because who knows what they're going through or why they're doing what they're doing. And, you know, while, while they are being demonized, the people who are feeling like the victims uh, feel like they're the ones not being understood or, or uh, being allowed to get things out of their system. So there's a, a tremendous amount of hypocrisy in society. It's, it's a lot of... People are trying to fix things without knowing where fixed is like what the definition of fixed is, you know, it's, it's like the environment stuff, you know, it's like they're focusing on, 
uh, global warming, but the global warming science has been debunked for decades. You know, it doesn't actually work, but they don't mind using it to control people's actions and control uh, how people think. You know, instead of using the truth, they're willing to use lies. And, you know, and then new people come around and they, they don't know it's a lie and they don't believe the truth. And you end up with what we have today where, where science isn't science, it's a religion. And religion isn't religion, it's a cult. You know, the, the, the real religions are people who have that connection to the creator and the history of their people and the world that they're in. That's it. They can call God whatever they want. God doesn't care. You know, as long as you're referring to God, uh, God really doesn't care that much about a lot of things. You know, you can, you can name the, the spirits and things if you, if you want to. God doesn't condemn people for that, obviously, you know, because it's just, it's just for, for, for understanding, you know, it helps people understand to anthropomorphize things, you know, it, it allows them to classify things in a hierarchy of importance in in their lives you know so it, it technically works but uh but today we have religious cults where all of these spirits are seen as actual beings and not an extension of the creator like the like our consciousness is an extension of the creator in the vessel that is our body you know the spirits in things are the creator's consciousness in those vessels you know people can live extremely well without understanding any of this you know because god isn't a condemning god you know when when god wipes people out it's usually because those people are tormenting other people you know stuff like that it's not just from being bad it's from it's from not leaving other people alone because how you treat another person is how you treat God. And God, because of how the food web works, God is always sacrificing himself for himself as everything is a vessel for the creator. So, you know, it's like you, you can't really talk about human nature without uh, talking about the nature of God because they're directly connected and intertwined. You know, the creator of all things. You know, it's why the present is always happening. You know, there's no future, there's no past, you know, but things are designed a way for it to work. And it is good, you know, whether, whether you're happy or not, you know, when you can separate yourself from your ego, everything works great, you know. But uh, but it's very hard in a lost society with broken connections to the Creator to be able to separate ourselves from our egos because it's it's where we get our strength and our certainty from. You know, without it and without the Creator's connection being being felt and known, we're we're literally lost, like the Walking Dead. So. The, the solution to all of this isn't slowly wiping out everybody that whose, whose biology is broken. You know, all, all we really need to do is work on stopping breeding for beauty the way that we do. Or I should say stop breeding for fetish beauty. You know, let people be with who they want to be with. You know, there's there's too many people making sure pretty people don't hook up with ugly people. But the truth is, that's what's required. Things like that, I should say, is what's required. You know, people, like I said, they can be with whoever they want. You know, they, they, they God doesn't care. You know, the more people mix, the better. Because it'll slowly heal our genetics, 
you know, and as we grow as humans, we'll eventually become the way we used to be because all of the designing genetics are already around us and in everything. So how long will it take? It doesn't matter. You know, it's best not to think about it like that. You know, the, mo most of the issues that we have that keep things from actually getting better is we don't leave each other alone when we should. Uh, we don't understand the creator at all because our minds have been broken by the kinds of lives we're forced to live. Um, anyone who doesn't have a broken connection to the creator is tormented and bullied and oppressed and persecuted because they're different and they act different. And because of their differences, they make everybody else angry, mostly out of jealousy because the person's able to be happy when they can't be happy, you know, because when you have that connection to the creator, you know, it's easy to, to, to step around the, the kind of emotional turmoil that most people carry with them, you know, because it's easier to understand that it's not yours, you know, and that you can, you can put things into perspective to, to be able to keep living. You know, a lot of people don't do that, and what they do to keep living has a lot to do with dopamine and triggering dopamine responses. So coping mechanisms, you know, like overuse of drugs, overuse of alcohol, overuse of anything that causes pleasure to make life worth living, you know. You know, part of leaving everybody alone has a lot to do with just because you know how things should be fixed doesn't mean that you can start attacking people who refuse to do it. You know, you, you, God is extremely patient and we should follow suit. You know, over time, the people who start fixing themselves you know, if they're allowed to, uh, will be seen as an example to others, you know, and it, it's, it's going to take time and it's probably happened before and it'll never stop happening because humans are always trying to, to heal themselves. You know, people don't like feeling like crap. You know, people don't want to have to feel like crap, no matter how many people say it's normal. You know, that's that's not that's not the norm, you know, is to be depressed and constantly treat that depression. You know, that's not the way it's supposed to be. You know, it's, you know, being depressed is, you know, keeps becoming a fad, you know, where it's cool to be negative, you know, but uh, and it's cool to be medicated. You know, that's, that's, you know, it, it, it's, it's like the, uh, the, the trans movement, you know, the trans movement came from the sex trade, you know, and it, and it didn't really come from the sex trade. Here's where it came from the sex trade. When, when whores have kids, the girls make more money than the boys. And if they dress the boy like the girl... Uh, Johns will be fooled into having sex with them and once they get going they don't really care but some of them do and the ones that do uh, are ridiculed uh, for caring too much about that kind of thing and then that develops into this homophobia science and trans philosophies and this goes back a very long time. Uh, Rome was run by whores. That's why it collapsed. Great Britain was run by whores. That's why it collapsed. Our current country is actually run by whores. And, and when I say whores, it's men and women. You know, it's like men and women are in the sex trade. It's not just women. But women make more money, typically, than the men do. 
um, women tend to be happier with it than men do. Currently, women think that there's power to gain from it. And, you know, they, they believe in magic power and, and sexual magic. There's, there's all these delusions that reinforce uh, them normalizing this culture. You know, you can't really call it a subculture, but it's a, it's a macro culture that lives behind a facade uh, to keep up appearances, you know, but, uh, but I remember during my time growing up, uh, women who idealize, uh, feminine power, uh, from the sex trade perspective, uh, really don't like men who don't like other men because they feel like it's some kind of bigotry. Um, they, I mean, that, that, that basically sums it up right there. You know, they, they believe that, uh, men shouldn't care if the girl they with they're with ends up being a boy they don't care you know they 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 think that'll eventually get that homophobia out of their system it's extremely screwed up but it's very normal for a lot of people this dynamic and it has everything to do with the uh the trans movement that has grown uh, towards the way it is today. It's it's very separate from LB uh, homosexuality. You know, homosexuality has. I mean, there's connections because the culture is the same culture, and by culture I mean everybody. You know, the Western culture, where prostitution is basically normal, even if it's illegal. Um, Laws don't really do anything except enforce the facade. Um, so uh, it's complicated, and I'm just I'm just doing this all off the top of my head. The uh, because we're in a giant whorehouse, men who are in or connected to the sex trade a lot of times end up with very strong negative feelings towards women. And the more women who are outside of the sex trade idealize the power of the sex trader type femininity, the more men encounter these women outside of the sex trade. And they end up not wanting to be with women but since we're technically in a giant whorehouse, sex, sexualism is important to what we believe is human nature. So a, a lot of it's screwed up because we're supposed to be being raised to start having kids when we hit our teenager, teenage years. So biologically, that's what we want to do. But we're forced to reject that and it screws us up sexually and we end up being pushed towards fetishizations pornography stuff like that and it ends up making you know while while girls have an easier time not being sexually neglected boys have a much harder time not being sexually neglected because the, the sex trade mentality believes that uh, boys need more effort to be tamed than girls do. You know, whereas, you know, the, the fathers in the brothel, uh, they still think that the girls need more control over their sexuality. But, uh, but that's been, you know, worn down over the years. So girls have gone nuts with, with how uh, crazy, 
humans are uh, not being able to live as normal humans, but kind of being in a, uh, a boot camp for a brothel, you know, being uh, behaviorally educated to be brothel friendly, you know, for either as a producer, you know, a sex worker, or as a consumer, or as someone who stays out of the way while having it all around them and constantly advertised to them and all that stuff. So, men, most men are uh, in a state of being neglected of their human nature in almost every way. And then because their biology wants them to make babies, uh, it makes them kind of crazy when it comes to that. You know, it makes them impulsive. Uh, it makes them basically impulsive. You know, that pretty much covers all the bases of, of where that can go. Uh, women can be that way, but a lot of times behind the scenes they have more outlets because they're not as restricted when it comes to those kinds of things. Um, which is, you know, a lot, you know, there's some men that aren't that restricted in those kinds of things too, but they usually end up, uh, becoming gay, you know, when, when they grow up because they, they don't like the interactions that they had and, and the environment around, uh, how, how women are in, in the brothel, you know, because, uh, you know, especially these days, women have gone completely wild, and a lot of the things that they do are are fairly uh, antagonistic and uh, vindictive and vengeful. You know, it's like one one guy does something to them, they take it out on all guys because they think that you know they think that everybody's the same. And that they're the default, you know, within the brothel, people think that they're normal humans, you know, because they're not restricted and they're not uh, denying their nature, you know, when in reality, the people that they, you know, despise, a lot of them are living out their human nature and they're happy, you know, when, especially if they're left alone. You know, which drives the brothel crazy because they're not supposed to be happy. You know, because they're denying their humanity by denying their sexuality and all this other stuff. It's, it's, it's very complex because while everyone thinks they're the same, it's like a schizophrenic. Everybody actually has different ideas. <laughs> you know, they just don't share them. You know, because they'll be ridiculed if they do. You know, if they're different than what everyone else thinks. So... It's it's pretty complicated. It's very complicated. It took me a very long time to understand this stuff. And I would never have understood it to the level that I do without uh, without the time where I had healed my connection to the Creator. Um, and I had that connection for... It's hard to remember. It, it, it doesn't feel like it was that long. You know, when I found out how much uh, my family members and a whole bunch of other people that I don't even know were trying to manipulate and control me, uh, I realized I wasn't going to be able to do the things that I wanted to do to be happy. And I started drinking that connection away. I, I, I worked to re-break that connection, and it worked. Um, now, if I wanted that connection back, I would have to, you know, uh, fix my diet a lot more. You know, I'd have to eat more living food and uh, avoid things that uh, cause bodily harm, you know, food wise. And then eventually it would, it would come back, but, uh, but I haven't had the opportunity to do that. But yeah, that's all it took for me was uh, finding out what foods actually heal and then finding out what foods and rich, uh, you know, that are actual foods, and then I just ate that, I just ate those foods, so it's a lot of, uh, 
you know, like, uh, I had kefir was a main part of my diet. It's like yogurt, but it's got more cultures in it, but it's full of living bacteria and the bacteria are like eating a whole animal, you know, it has all of the, uh, parts of the body that the body needs to grow, you know, the, the eating part, the digesting part, the, the reproducing parts, you know, it actually has everything. And then I had, uh, you know, and I, I would mix it into a cup. So I'd have uh, pumpkin seeds because it's high in zinc. And, you know, I could get raw pumpkin seeds. I got uh, uh, apple cider vinegar. Uh, I got this type of apple cider vinegar that had all these extra additives to it that made it taste a lot better. Uh, like spicy <laughs> and honey. And, uh, and I'd add a little bit of honey. I didn't really have to add any honey, but I added a little bit of honey anyways to the mix because it made it taste better. Uh, celery. I'd add a little bit of celery because celery is high in magnesium. I'd add broccoli because broccoli is considered a superfood. It's got a lot of good nutrients in it. Um, what else? I'd add a little turmeric. It's anti-inflammatory. I'd add a little bit of uh, of uh, cinnamon. There's this type of cinnamon that doesn't have negative effects on the body. I think it's like cerulean or something like that. And uh, that's anti-inflammatory. Um, what else did I put in there? That was the main stuff. A little bit of black seed oil, you know, black sesame seed oil, because it's uh, it's known to be anti-cancer. Um, so it's probably antifungal. You know, I, I believe that a lot of viruses and cancers are actually a type of fungus or different kinds of funguses, because a lot of funguses don't have their own cellular structure. They, they're just genetics and uh, cellular materials, and they hijack the cells and things like that. And that's basically it. And I would mix it all up into this really thick meal. And uh, one wasn't enough for food for the whole day. You know, I, I had to add more more to my diet in order to, to not get, uh, <laughs> to not feel weak. <laughs> And, uh, and then as like a, a dessert version, I would take, uh, frozen blueberries and strawberries and, uh, and the kefir and I would mix that together into uh, a fruit smoothie and that tasted pretty good. I think I added a little bit of honey to that too. I mean, you can add pretty much whatever you want, but I mean, I was only using organic ingredients as well. And that makes a big difference, you know, cause, uh, non-organic or at least a lot of non-organic stuff doesn't have as many nutrients you know it's not as healthy of a of a uh, of a product you know as far as its life you know the the actual uh plant or meat aren't healthy uh in themselves not not just for us but you know they 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 don't have as much uh, health inside themselves and it's that life the living things the little critters that are inside the cells that help that add to our own body's biology so it's like i i believe that a lot of our natural immune system comes from literally the immune systems of the food that we eat you know we don't have the genetics to recreate those little critters but a lot of them stay alive for a while inside of our bodies, you know, and that, that includes the, the little critters inside of the bacteria and the yogurts and the, uh, and things like that. You know, they do a lot more for us than we think, you know, which is why living food is so important and it helps, uh, oh yeah. And in my original drink, I would put in some coconut oil as well, uh, uh, raw cold pressed uh, organic coconut oil because it's got, uh, saturated fats that your nervous system needs. 
you know, and it can actually, you know, it's like with the right nutrition, you can actually he help heal your nervous system in ways that are considered impossible. And eventually that's what led to me starting to be able to feel the creator connection. And it was amazing. You know, it was, it was, it created the happiest time of my life. And I was already entering the happiest time of my life because of the people I was loving and that were loving me back. And, you know, because I was learning things, I put myself into a situation where I was learning things uh, because I wanted to, to know the truth about what's going on with people instead of, instead of following just hearsay from people that I thought knew what they were talking about. Um, it ended up, causing all sorts of issues, you know, but, uh, but it's the way things are, you know, it's like, it's, it's part of the process. So, you know, the truth will set us free, but you got to learn it somehow, you know, so I try to, to share what I've learned so that, not just so that people don't have to put themselves through what I went through in order to learn it, but it's almost impossible to learn these things. You know, it's like if I hadn't been sick my whole life and had so much time on my hands to to answer the questions that I had, uh, I wouldn't know most of this stuff. So, and, and knowing, I mean, being able to understand it. So, anyways, that's enough. It's 41 minutes. One of my longer videos. Uh, I kind of covered all the bases. Uh, if anyone has any actual questions, let me know. I like answering real questions. Uh, no one will probably see this because it's going to be on YouTube and they don't share my videos with anybody that would actually want to hear it because everybody's in an algorithm and, and media uh, created echo chambers. So, but... Uh, but it's the way it is. I'll probably chop it up and try to put it on uh, TikTok. But TikTok only allows 10-minute videos. So, anyways, love you all. Good luck.